Good morning sir. Good to see you. Yes to you. How are you? I'm good sir. Right. Yo. Mzima. Mzima kabisa. Right. Yeah. Karibu sana. Asante. Wajua tukiona hiyo reflector tunaona ni kama nyumba imeanguka mahali. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> mm, we are used to see them kwa wakati ma vitu zimefanyika hivi hivi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's our work. Mm -hmm. It's our core mandate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They tell me it's a calling. Yeah, it's a calling. In fact, it's a calling. Because if you are, you are kind of uh, uh, just like uh, anybody else cannot able to to deliver because if you are not being trained and uh, if you are not being able to to see some disasters happening mm -hmm. around it's very difficult to handle the disasters. Right. Yeah. Very true. Right. And also, we'll be talking to me about um, the mental status of uh, first aiders. You know, you go into scenes quite um, very, you know, you go somewhere, you find people uh, have been burnt, and you just go there, pick bodies. Mm -hmm. How can that be, uh, how can you manage your mental status and uh, issues about trauma? Also, you'll explain to me. But first and first, Bwana Ekaka Bernard. I want you to introduce yourself to your our viewers who are watching you right now. Who exactly is Bernard Ekeka? Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity uh, to be in Boss TV. Uh, my name is Bernard Ekeka, as you say. I'm from Kenya Red Cross uh, in Training Institute. I'm a marketing lead. Uh, we are the humanitarian organization as a Kenya Red Cross. And, uh, as I say that Kenya Red Cross uh, work of Kenya Red Cross are calling. Mm -hmm. are calling, yeah. Right. Yeah. For how long have you been in the industry, Red Cross, Sasa? Uh, since uh, I was in high school, I joined Red Cross. And then when I finished high school, I went to college when in, I was in Red Cross. Until now, I'm in Red Cross. I enjoy the fruit of Kenya Red Cross. You, 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 do you want to tell me, is, is, it, is it a part-time job or it's, it's your job? Yeah, right. Uh, I started as a volunteer. In Kenya Red Cross, mm -hmm. when I was in high school, when I was in college as a volunteer, until now I got a, a, a vacancy job as a marketing lead. Mm -hmm. uh, we deal with the trainings as an institute in right. Kenya Red Cross. Mm -hmm. yeah. So specifically you handle issues about training? Trainings. Right. Yeah. Okay. The training that we normally offer mm -hmm. is uh, fire first aid, you deal first aid, Professional first aid, we deal with the short medical courses, the PLS, mm -hmm. the SLS, the advanced trauma life support, uh, advanced trauma life support for nurses, we deal with the fire, basic fire, mm -hmm. and occupational fire, and also uh, emergency vehicle operation, we deal also with the emergency medical technicians, the first responders, and so many courses in terms of emergency and disaster management very true yeah. right quite a lot there you do it and of course we must say that you're doing quite a job that is quite been seen out there but of course uh, before we even get to uh, go far maybe our viewer is wondering what exactly are we talking about what is this first aid thing good uh, for this opportunity that i've got today at least i can able to explain about first aid mm -hmm. because it's very very vital and very fundamental uh, issue in the community. So first aid is uh, uh, immediately help given to any patient or casualty before transported to the nearest hospital. Uh, like for example, maybe the road traffic accident happening, we need a uh, first aid at least to save life in terms of controlling bleeding and any other injuries that should uh, is a life threatening to a condition to the, the patient. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So it's the immediate um, treatment to what? Is immediate treatment given to any patient who has got injured before transported to the nearest right. hospital. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why you say it's it's fundamental. Fundamental, very fundamental. You know, uh, when you're talking about um, being fundamental here, it shows that like there is quite an importance for we need to have first aiders in our community. Exactly. How important do we even need to know first aid in the first place? One, um, as I tell you that um, first aid. One of the aim of first aid to save life. Right. Two, it's promote uh, further injury, to prevent further injury, sorry, mm -hmm. and promote recovery and alleviating human suffering. Mm -hmm. So when in the community or in the households, we need everyone to be trained first aid. Why? Because in case of fainting, in case of any injury, in case of burns, in case of fractures, someone can able to help that patient before transporting the hospital. 
Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So, like, uh, when somebody has got injured, maybe bleeding, you know, severe bleeding can cause uh, shock. Mm -hmm. And uh, persistence of shock can cause death. So we need somebody at least be trained on first aid on how to control the bleeding before transport to hospital. It's right. very important. Mm -hmm. In a normal human being, you have five to six liters of blood. When you lose uh, like a uh, uh, half, half liter, which is 500 ml, 400, uh, 500 ml, somebody might go into uh, shock. Right. Yeah. That's why you need to, uh, to have a first aid knowledge to control bleeding and also to manage anything that may happen in terms of uh, injuries. Right. Yeah. Very true. Now, looking at first aid in itself, uh, when a uh, kaka here, yeah. what do you think came into the mind of the person who came about with this first aid? Sorry? What did uh, the guy who came up with the first aid thing, you know? I know you may not understand the history behind it so deeply, but of course, why, why did they spot a gap that they said we need to know this? Okay. Um, let me speak about... Uh, uh, Red Cross uh -huh. and the founder. The founder of Red Cross was called Henry Dunant. He right. found Henry Dunant. Uh -huh. uh, he was um, a businessman. His father was uh, has a background of uh, medical. Uh, so uh, which country was he from? Uh, in San Farino. Right. Yeah. So uh, during the uh, uh, there's a war in Italy uh -huh. and Austro Hungary and a place called Salfarino, whereby the soldiers were fighting each other. So there's a lot of uh, injuries and wounded people. So this guy, because of uh, the heart of helping, the willing of uh, heart of helping, mm -hmm. he decided to give uh, the first aid to those who are wounded. And from there, he went back home to his country and he shattered, whereby I requested the countries to have a humanitarian society mm -hmm. to deal with uh, 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 Things like uh, emergencies, we deal with things about uh, first aid. Right. Yeah. So that's how it came about with yeah, the Red yeah, Cross yeah. team. Yeah, yeah. Right. And it is a voluntary service. Mm -hmm. Because giving someone first aid on the road or any other places, it's a voluntary service. Right. We need to have a heart of willing to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Very true. Before we even come to the knowledge part of it, um, how to know what you're supposed to do in the line of first aid. It takes a bit of qualities to be a good first aider, right? Yeah. Which are some? One of the qualities, you need to be knowledgeable. You cannot render any first aid services without being trained. You need to be knowledgeable. You need to be skilled and competent. Mm -hmm. Right? You need to be calm. Because this situation do happen. And people panic. Mm -hmm. People have emotions. So you need to be calm. And you need also to have a good leadership skill. Right. Yeah for you to render first aid. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you need to be trained, get knowledge, competence, and skills, mm -hmm. right? Right. And you need to be, at least, to be calm, self-control. You need to, have, to be focused, whatever you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those right. are some of the uh, samples of uh, qualities of a good first aid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. And of course, in any, in any market, you must have that one madman, you know? Mm -hmm. What makes a bad first aider now? Sorry? In a group of first aiders, mm -hmm. what can we say that if you do this can make you be seen as a bad first aider? Okay. Um, when you deal with the uh, emergencies, as I say, mm -hmm. you need to be calm. But there's some scenarios where there some scenarios like a uh, road traffic accident. Mm -hmm. You see uh, uh, someone has been injured, uh, the, the, the small intestines are out, we call, normally call it visceration. Mm -hmm. We see the brain matter is out, so somebody may be traumatized. And once you are traumatized, you cannot able to, run, to render good services to the community. Right. So you may panic, and then, mm -hmm. when you are panicking, even uh, handling that patient is very, very difficult. You may even worsen the situation there. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that, those kind of people, they need what you call a debrief. Mm -hmm. A debrief. Mm -hmm. So you need to give to brief them, uh, to give them a debrief, to talk to them, so that they can able to at least to open up and talk uh, about the, the situation. Right. Yeah. Very true. Right. 
Remember that is what we are discussing about first aid basics out there. We need to help you understand what exactly is first aid that I believe uh, you've taken some bit of notes concerning that because my guest is full of knowledge and material when it comes to matters about first aid and it's quite important simply because we are trying to save life here and make sure that we reduce uh, and make sure that the situation does not worsen and of course uh, in the line that we believe that uh, the basic um uh, we, we believe that basic uh, that first aid is paramount here we have basic first aid that uh, the household people there and the local yami uh, pale they are supposed to know about and of course that is one of uh, your goals to make sure that in every household at least there is somebody who understands first aid now during your line of training bwana bernard what exactly do you train about exactly in handling first aid do you cover a whole aspect of first aid or you, you have some instances that you pick good in first aid you have packages we have what you call uh, basic first aid that's the awareness about first aid mm -hmm. in basic first aid you don't want to teach people about um, explain about what is first aid importance of first aid, right. aims of first aid, quality of the first aid, and we got what to call basic life support mm -hmm. to deal with the on how to resuscitate a patient or to do what we call a CPR, mm -hmm. cardiopulmonary resuscitation. In case of somebody that's going to cardiac arrest or any other uh, cardiovascular disease mm -hmm. that has uh, 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 undergo into maybe like uh, cardiac arrest, heart attack, something like that, or even choking. Those are the basic things that you normally teach on basic first aid. Just mm -hmm. uh, awareness. At least someone can be able to know how to, uh, to control bleeding, how to, to address the patient, how to just to give uh, what you call uh, uh, post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. on someone. Right. Emotional, some, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So there is packages that you pick yeah. and you say... And then you we have also occupational first aid. Mm -hmm. Normally goes for five days. For basic goes for one day. Mm -hmm. For special first aid, four days. You sure a day is enough for basic? Yeah, it's enough. Mm -hmm. Because just something like basic. Even right now, you can just tell you that from uh, eight, uh, eight to four, mm -hmm. just get to uh, eight hours for you to understand the basic uh, first aid. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then we have for occupational first aid goes for four days. And then further training, we have what to call first responders. We have uh, uh, what to call uh, uh, basic life support. Mm -hmm. We have what to call advanced cardiac life support, and we have also advanced trauma life support for the healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. And then you have also what to call um, fire, basic fire. You have what to call occupational fire safety. We have so many courses, including emergency vehicle operation. Mm -hmm. We have the we have seen your ambulance. We have seen our vehicles. So we need someone at least to be undergo the training right. on emergency vehicle operation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very true. Quite, uh, it sounds like a whole series of uh, units, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it takes a lot to become a first aider. Yeah. But now, um, you know, things happen in our homes, in our locality, that we need somebody to chip in and handle it before we get to the hospital. That's who is a first aider, right? Yeah. Now, for instance, um, there was a scenario I saw here, and I need you to try and help, how, uh, help us on how you thought somebody can handle such a case. Mm -hmm. Um, a child picks um, a, a grain of a, a bean, a bean grain, mm -hmm. and puts it into the ear. Mm -hmm. How do we handle that? Okay, uh, before I start to explain on how we handle, we normally say prevention is better than cure. Mm -hmm. For any child less than five years, we do advise the parents not to give the small, small things for the child to, to use to play. Because those things, apart from the ears, mm -hmm. they can also use to put in the mouth, mm -hmm. and it goes to do what you call choking. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the scenario, in the put the something like balls, small, small uh, balls in the ears, we normally, uh, when it's inside, we, we just uh, do what you call, uh, you package the place. When you cannot able to remove the, the, the item, you just uh, dress that place, make sure it's not bleeding, and transport that patient to the yeah, that's hospital. Right. Yeah. So there's nothing you can do like enter a, a piece of metal and pull no, it out? No, 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 it's not allowed. <laughs> because in hospital, uh -huh. we have uh, those uh, professional surgeons in the theater. Mm -hmm. They can also use other apparatus. Mm -hmm. But for your first aid, make sure the patient 
is fully conscious, if undergoes into unconsciousness, what will you do? You start what you call uh, uh, opening the airway, and then you start what you call a CPR. Uh -huh. Yeah, checking right. if there's a circulation, there's breathing, open the airway, and then you start CPR. If it's unconscious, patient, no signs of breathing, uh -huh. no circulation, All right. CPR. Very but good. if the patient is conscious, just transport the nearest hospital. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Very true. You ask is to make sure that if he's conscious, you just carry in transport to yeah. the nearest hospital. You know, there's something that people don't understand in fasting. When you are helping someone mm -hmm. and you, your capacity is limited, right. you call for help. Mm -hmm. You call for help. help. For example, uh, bleeding, maybe some, something has uh, happened and so the patient is bleeding and you don't have a gloves. Mm -hmm. You improvise. If you don't have any provision materials, you just call for, for help. Mm -hmm. Calling for help is also one of the first aid mm -hmm. that you can give that patient. Right. Yeah. So you don't struggle that I need to do this, I need to do this. If your capacity, in terms of resources, in terms of your knowledge, you cannot be able to handle the patient. Just call for help immediately. Call ambulance. Mm -hmm. And then they'll come and pick the person the nearest person. Right. Yeah. Very true. Right. And um, now, in the in the event that um, um, something has happened, uh, uh, you know, there is um, a procedure for first making sure that before you even get to that person and helping him, you, there is factors you need to consider. There seems there are things you're supposed to put into consideration before you even attend to a patient. Mm -hmm. What are some of these things that you are supposed to look into? Uh, in first, you have four uh, principles. One, you must make sure set. Your, of who? Safety, your safety comes first. Mm -hmm. The safety of those people around and the safety of the, pe the patient or the casualty. Right. Number two, the invasive precautions. When you're talking about safety there, what do you mean exactly? What am I supposed to do to make sure that the safety is good? Good. For example, there's a riot. Mm -hmm. People are being injured. You're not supposed to go there with the scene. What you're supposed to do? At least to look around. Any life threatening conditions. Right. And then if you if the, the situation does not permit you to enter, mm -hmm. you just call for help from who? Maybe from a law enforcement to come and calm the, the situations. So the safety, you make sure your safety comes first before you hand over the, the patients. Like another example is for road traffic accident. There's a, a, a head on collision, the two vehicles, the engine is on, people are surrounded place. You're not supposed to go direct and help the patient. You ask yourself, am I safe? Is the place safe? Is my people safe? Why? Right. Yeah. If the situation is not safe, don't enter. Just make a call. Uh, now, so suppose now I've spotted somebody is dying, bleeding. Mm -hmm. Profuse. Is what? Pre? Profuse. Right. That word, you know. Mm -hmm. My tongue is or quite... severe bleeding. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, you've just spotted is bleeding so seriously. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that um, I've assessed the situation and I feel it's not Safe. quite safety enough Maybe to... there's some engines running, mm -hmm. maybe there's some, a lot of, uh, maybe some objects right. around there. I should just... Like glasses, whatever. Uh -huh. You need to make sure you are safe. In terms of, ask yourself, when I enter there, there's any hazardous materials which can, uh, uh, may injure my, myself mm -hmm. or my colleague. Right. Again... You ask yourself, am I using, uh, are, you, are you using the right uh, PPEs, personal protective equipment? One of them, in terms of bleeding, is gloves. Uh -huh. Not any other gloves. There's what we call latex examination gloves. Uh -huh. Not any other gloves that people are using to wear nowadays. Like you have industrial gloves, you have uh, other heavy duty gloves. Right. Here you use examination gloves. gloves. Uh -huh. You need to wear gloves. That's in a principle number two, as we call universal precaution because they are everywhere. You need to. To wear when you are handling the car. Right. Mm -hmm. Number two, the mechanism of injury. Maybe someone has fallen from above. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody there's a road traffic accident. Maybe there's a riot. So the mechanism of injury or the nature of illness you need to consider. Number four, the principle number four in first stage, getting help. Mm -hmm. You need to get help. Is the situation is of a help, uh, overwhelming you? You need to get help. From right. Our bystanders from adding AMS team or from any people that can able to come and help you. So there are four principles in first day. 
One is safety. Mm -hmm. Your safety as a first leader, the, the, the safety of others, and the safety of the casualty. Mm -hmm. And then universal precaution or body substance isolation. You need to isolate yourself from any uh, substance, including blood, uh, vomitus, or any fluid that comes from the, inside mm -hmm. the patient. And then you need to want to do what you call mechanism of injury or the nature of illness. You right. Know, using a common sense. Mm -hmm. And lastly, you need to consider what you call getting help. Right. Those are the four principles that will guide you when you are dealing with any injuries or emergencies mm -hmm. that do happen. Very true. Yeah. Right. Now, from the time at which you, you, you began working in the line of Red Cross mm -hmm. until now, mm -hmm. do you feel like there is strides that have been made and things are changing in our society on the way we handle uh, emergencies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of improvements in our society. In our days, the society, they are now getting to understand the importance of fasting. Let me start from maybe from households. There's some people who have you know, kids. Mm -hmm. And kids, kids used to play around. Maybe the kids that play are falling from above, mm -hmm. from the stairs, those who are using the, 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 the store buildings. Right. So when the kid is injured, what will you do? Mm -hmm. You need to mobilize the limbs or the part that has been injured, injured. using appropriate materials, mm -hmm. like the triangular bandage or any other materials. So, in nowadays, the society has seen the importance of fasting. Now they are coming in to be trained, at least on basic fasting, for the uh, households, uh, house uh, helps, for the kids themselves, for mm -hmm. the parents. Even in the school, uh, the school level, the student from lower classes to upper classes to university and colleges right. to secondary school, mm. they are now accepting the importance of fasting. True. So there's a lot of important traffic accident. People are now, when they see red cross, they see there's a help. Mm -hmm. There's someone come and help the situation. Right. So they are just giving the way. But previously, people are rejecting. Ah, no. Mm. If you. You are just coming from nowhere to hell, no. But nowadays, if you are going, if you are a civilian, say, I'm a first aider, mm -hmm. you accept it. You accept it, right. Very yeah. true. Right. And um, you've mentioned about in our schools also, we've seen uh, students joining uh, Red Cross. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'll, I'll frame this question like this. Do you feel like there is need also to put the first aid basics and uh, trainings into our syllabuses? Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. Right. Because uh, when these kids are starting uh, understanding fasting, right. the school level curriculum, when they grow up, they learn a lot of things and they can use to, uh, to do them. So when you introduce that topic in the school, especially in the lower classes, mm -hmm. like a, a kid of uh, five years, they come home, Daddy have been trained how to save uh, nose bleeding person. Mm -hmm. you, need, you do like this, mm -hmm. you pinch the soap part of the nose, and then you put a white kitamba here. Mm -hmm. You see that is good, so the child is so much happy to save life. Mm -hmm. And that is the, uh, the, 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 the community that, uh, or the society that you need, people to save each other. And from there, they can learn on how to give uh, first help or to do what you call humanitarian service. Right. They will learn a lot of humanitarian service, mm -hmm. and they can help the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you kind of advise the government to look we into that advise, matter? Right. We do advise the government at least to, to lobby and to initiate first aid in our syllabus. In, in our syllabus. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Life, as far as the COVID is concerned, mm -hmm. as far as any other disease or infection and injuries, in our days we have technology. Once the technology has come in, there are a lot of things are happening, like uh, road traffic accidents, uh, by vehicles, or motor motorcycles, and so on. So there's a need people to, to have that knowledge from the mm -hmm. classroom mm -hmm. or from school. Right. Yeah. Very true. Right. Quite a lot we are discussing this morning that pertains to the way we handle emergencies in our households, the way we handle emergencies in our society, simply because... Um, according to my guest, he has explained that there is quite a lot of improvement in terms of uh, more first aiders coming on board and making sure that they understand a little bit of first aid and the basics of first aid at the, at the time at which 
things happen in a, a, at home there. But before we even attack, talk a short break here, Bona Bernard, um, there is things that are pushing um, the goals and visions of uh, say an entity like you as Red Cross in making sure that we have uh, more of uh, first aiders out there. Well, uh, talk about the issue of uh, ignorance issues about maybe our culture like um, you say if i see a, a patient who is a um, elder or a, a woman i cannot as a man here like me now young enough i can't go to attend such um a, a woman do you feel like such cultures uh, such mindsets and notions also are pulling out um the issue about the strides that you're making as an entity good uh, as an entity and as also a professional person in the emergency medical field mm -hmm. Uh, I say ignorance is one of the disasters that affects the whole world, especially in Kenya. Uh, in medical, on the culture and the norms of mm -hmm. the community do affect. Right? Right. Like uh, uh, in some communities, they say that you cannot handle uh, female ladies if you are a male. Mm -hmm. But we normally ask ourselves somebody is unconscious, it's lying down. Yes, some few minutes to survive. Will you leave that, that person because of the community? Right. No. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we need to get a consent from uh, the community or from the relatives. Right. And then, if you have a lady first aider, we give opportunity. But if there is no lady first aider, what will you do? You go directly to the patient. You have no because choice. Because the aim is to save life. Mm -hmm. But when you are saving life, remember the privacy and the dignity of the, of the patient. Mm -hmm. So you're not supposed to go and do your own things which are not in the line of principle fasting. Mm -hmm. We need to consider privacy and dignity of the fasting. Right. The patient, so. Mm -hmm. so when you render those services in the community, those are saying that the, uh, the uh, community does not allow the, patient, uh, the, the male to touch the female or the female to touch the male. In our days, I think they not getting in the system mm -hmm. because they, according to the scenario to happen. Right. Yeah. So first of all, you need to get a concept from the patient or from the relatives and observe all the, uh, the patient rights. After all, they have right of life. After all, they have the right of privacy. Mm -hmm. After all, they have the, the right to refuse of care. Mm -hmm. When they refuse care, what do you do? You do advise them the importance of care. Mm -hmm. or the interest of the service that you need to, to give them Very true. so that they can able to understand. The problem is just only the ignorance and the, to, to fail to understand about the first aid. Right. But first aid plays a vital role in our society. Mm -hmm. Before even transport that patient to hospital, you as the first leader, you are playing a very vital role to save life. For example, someone has gone to cardiac arrest right. and you have a, a long journey to go to maybe Coast General. How many minutes will you take to go to Coast General or call for ambulance? But if, if you have been trained on do what you call a CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, you can able to do and to save that person. Because breathing, circulation, those are the major areas in the human life. Mm -hmm. Once you have a blocked airway, you cannot able to breathe in and out. Mm -hmm. And you have only some few minutes, five to ten minutes to survive. Right. So you need people to be trained on to how to do basic life support mm -hmm. to save you. Very true. Yeah. Right. Allow me to take a short break here. When I come back, I'll be asking you, do you feel like, uh, you know, it's said out there that uh, first aiders are making um, people to be ignorant of going to hospitals? If somebody gets burned at home, mm -hmm. he just treats him or herself and it's just done like that. Mm -hmm. And of course, the issue about uh, how has COVID-19 affected uh, um, your line of duty as a first aider? That is what we'll be coming back to discuss more after this short break. Remember, we are discussing on matters to do with your health, particularly first aid basics. Send in your questions. Send in your questions, comments, thoughts, sentiments to my guest, Bernard Ekaka, who understands when we are talking about the issues surrounding the basics of first aid, is here to shed some bit of more light concerning what you ought to know in the line of first aid. Time for us now to take our second break of the show. We'll be coming back in a moment. Welcome to the second part. Thank you very much. <clears throat> before even uh, before we even uh, took a short break, I had asked you a, a simple question before we come back to the issue about COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like um, whatever you're training out there, issues about first aid and first aiders, is derailing efforts for people to go into hospitals and getting quality services? 
Like for instance, if I get burned in my house and I treat myself, do I even need to go to the hospital again? Good. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, as I said earlier, that uh, first first aid is uh, the first line of treatment. Mm -hmm. Initial. You, initial. Mm -hmm. uh, in the in terms of uh, burns, because treatment of burns, uh, as I explain a little bit, uh, we just. Uh, yeah, give someone uh, or uh, putting the place to a running, normal running water. Mm -hmm. And as a first aider, you're not supply, uh, supposed to apply uh, something like some people are applying like Colgate or Cowdown uh, uh, or whatever. In our home place, we apply and you say you are okay. Right. But no. You are supposed to give first aid and advise the patient or the casualty to go to the hospital for further treatment. Because for further treatment, uh, maybe in the third degree ban, he needs to be uh, at least get some medication to do what you call dressings and to get some fluids like normal saline, to get some uh, maybe other fluids like uh, five percent extras, or get um, to get uh, maybe somebody has a um, uh, need of oxygen. So for you to give someone first aid, you're not supposed to tell the, or advise the patient that you are not supposed to go to hospital. Mm -hmm. No. You are supposed to give first aid and advise the patient to go to the nearest hospital for right. further treatment. Mm -hmm. For further Perfect. treatment. So it will depend with the casualty himself. If he feels like going or not, that's not your part. If the patient is conscious, fully conscious, you advise to go to hospital. Or just accompany the patient to the hospital. But if the patient is unconscious, has a third degree burn, mm -hmm. full body thickness, you are supposed to take that person to hospital, calling for ambulance. To transport that patient, prompt transport. Right. Prompt transport to hospital. Mm -hmm. Right. For further treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the reason as to why I had asked you that question is simply we were having a kind of topic that pertains self medication here. And uh, it was being blamed that more, there is so much information out there that people can treat themselves and um, such information can be gotten from first aid trainings. Do you feel also you can take that blame or you something that you rubbish? No, you don't take that blame. But uh, what we can advise the public or the community, they should not take home remedies to treat for any injuries mm -hmm. or burns. Special burns, people use uh, fluoride, toothpaste. People use uh, flour. Right. People use a lot of things to treat for burns. Mm -hmm. But we remember uh, the chemical has not been proven, scientific proven for treatment for burns. And we, we, we advise people not to use those kind of remedies right. because they are not uh, good for your body. I have not been approved by the maybe the, 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 the researchers. Mm -hmm. So you are not supposed to apply those chemicals in your body. What you are supposed to do, use a protocol, first aid uh, treatment of burns protocol. Mm -hmm. One, identify the place, expose the place, and then take the, the running water, normal running water. Not any other water. Some, some people tell that you can use cold water. It's very, very dangerous to put cold water. Mm -hmm. Just normal running uh, water. water very true yeah right but, but so not true. using any mm -hmm. remedy and then uh, you, you just refer that patient to go to the nearest hospital for further treatment and medication mm -hmm. yeah so it should not end at the first aid thing you yeah, must move yeah. to the hospital yeah, exactly right yeah. quite a key note to note there on how we handle issues about first aid now coming back to my question mm -hmm. has COVID-19 affected first aid in the first place yeah, not only first aid, mm -hmm. because first aid is part, uh, part of the uh, medical field. Mm -hmm. So as far as medical field is concerned, right. people are over health. Mm -hmm. In the hospital, you have seen the other days, people don't have oxygen, mm -hmm. people are... Uh, Shortage suffering. of beds. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So exactly, in first aid too has affected the uh, uh, first aid trainings, especially nowadays we have social distance. You have to train by uh, when you are wearing mask. You have uh, nowadays you don't give uh, what to call uh, uh, two keys of life or uh, rescue grids. You just do what to call a CPR, only right. chest compressions. So for you to perform um, effective CPR, at least you, you need to give uh, 30 compressions for adults and two rescue grids. But right. nowadays COVID has affected. There's no uh, giving rescue grids. For the patient right yeah so okay. that's affected in terms of uh, performing the the cpr and also in terms of uh, trainings 
there's uh, in like uh, previously in 2020 there, there are no training for the first aiders mm -hmm. but uh, at least now we can just give some people some few people to be trained uh, observing social distance uh, uh, COVID-19 protocols right yeah has your work been easy during this time of COVID-19 well uh, I've not been easy as I said because right. of the COVID uh, issues Mm -hmm. So it's some, some things, uh, some companies, or because normally target the companies, normally target the schools. So they say, in our days, we don't allow people to come in our school because of COVID. So it's been, become an hectic for right. us. Mm -hmm. So we need to at least to, to prepare, uh, have enough preparation right. for you to train uh, first aiders. Very true. Yeah. Right. And looking at um, uh, the, the, this time of COVID-19, mm -hmm. quite a lot has been happening. Mm -hmm. And there's issue that came about that concerns home care. Um, I don't know what. Home, home, home based care. care. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you feel also first aid is paramount when it comes to home care, um, uh, home based care here of COVID-19? Well, um, sometimes we uh, tell people that uh, home based care is, is, a, 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 is broad terminology. When you say home based care for COVID-19, specifically for COVID-19, and that one needs a health profession person mm -hmm. to deal with that COVID-19 patient. Right. But when you talk about uh, home based care, or in terms of first aid, maybe in terms of uh, the patient needs sometimes to be, or in terms of medication or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, home based care, we advise that um, people should get, go to hospital. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for COVID-19, I cannot talk about uh, the, 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 the ministry protocol mm -hmm. on now home-based care because it's under the Ministry of Health to talk on home-based care. So I cannot go uh, deeper on home-based care, Very but true. I just go to first aid uh, mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. So for first aid, once you have identified or there's any injuries that uh, do happen in the community or in the households, just give the first aid help and then refer the patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Very true. And uh, also, during this time, we've seen different entities, specifically those who are handling issues about medical, have been sensitizing a lot on matters to do with making sure that um, there is uh, the adherence of the protocols, the health protocols of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. As that's as just as uh, as it been the same on your case. And yeah. You talk about issues about the COVID-19 here and there. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, it discovers, it's an universal. Mm -hmm. As Red Cross, right, even right now, we have a program running by Red Cross, what you call um, uh, vaccine sensitization. Mm -hmm. Why? When you do that kind of activity, you need to ensure that all the protocols have been observed right. by the client you do attend. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in terms of precautions and the protocol from the Minister of Health, we need to observe. Because you are, you are um, Kenya Red Cross is a, a humanitarian a relief organization. Right. So you need to support the government to sensitize people. We do sensitization. We do door-to-door -door awareness. So you are part of awareness team mm -hmm. and sensitization team. Right. Yeah. Very true. Right. Now, I want us to talk a little bit about um, the Red Cross now thing that you do. We do understand we've quite seen you out there um, you know, we've seen your ambulances, we've seen these reflectors, we, you are quite known here. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you do out there? Good. Uh, that's a very nice question. Because Kenya Red Cross is, uh, as I said, it was started, uh, Red Cross alone, it started mm -hmm. in 1889 right. by Henry Dunan as a, a voluntary humanitarian society. And now it's the largest humanitarian society in the world, covering uh, almost 192 countries in the world. Now, when you come to Kenya Red Cross, it started in 1965 mm -hmm. under Cap 256 of the Kenyan uh, laws. Right. As a, a relief humanitarian society. And when you talk about uh, our mandates, it to respond, to prepare, mm -hmm. and to mitigate any disaster, an emergency crisis. Right. So we have department Kenya Red Cross. First of all, you have the Department of Disaster Preparedness and Response, mm -hmm. dealing with the disasters. We have the Department of Youth and Volunteers. Mm -hmm. We have the Department of um, 
humanitarian affairs, what you call international humanitarian affairs, dealing with the trainings, whereby the Kenya Red Cross Institute is in. We have the commercial um, department, like ambulance. It's a commercial enterprise that generates money for Red Cross, mm -hmm. for sustainability. Right. We have programs. We have the Department of Health and Social Services. Mm -hmm. So all those departments, they have also some uh, department inside it. So when you talk about um, Kenya Red Cross have been known as uh, uh, dealing with disasters at margins. Right. We are all over dealing with disasters and elevating human suffering. Right? Mm -hmm. So we are always there as our norm, as our slogan. Always there yeah. to help the society, help the community, to save life. So first aid has given Kenya Red Cross a mileage. Right. When we begin with first aiders, ambulance services, right, trainings, and also disaster management. So when somebody thinks about us, about uh, Kenya Red Cross, mm -hmm. it's one of the largest society, national and international, Very true. dealing with disasters, dealing with emergency crisis. Mm -hmm. Like even if you talk about a crisis like floods, we are there. Mm -hmm. Fire, we are there. A drought, we are there as a relief society. Right. Yeah. Very true. Right. And of course, we <laughs> must uh, um, give you thumbs up on that matter on dealing with uh, different emergencies out there and disasters that you are talking about. That is what exactly Red Cross has been dealing with quite um, in the number of years. He has mentioned that it began in 1881. Red Cross 1889 by Henry Dunant and Kenya Red Cross 1965 under Cap 256 of the Kenyan laws. Right. Uh, so previously, before 1965, it was called British Red Cross. Mm -hmm. But once uh, one Kenya got independence in 1964, uh, full republic of Kenya, right. in 1964, uh, on, during the Madaraka Day. So Kenya Red Cross 1965 was established as a, a national society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Of course, in, in the larger extent that now that it's a, it's a, it's a big entity, mm -hmm. but still there is um, some of uh, the challenges that you face as an entity, you know. Um, what um, are some of the few things that you out there face in your line of duty and making sure that in as, in as much as you're meeting your goals and missions out there, mm -hmm. there is still that things, there are things that you go through that pulls you back? Good. Mm -hmm. For example, when I move in, or when I come here, people say that uh, Musada Mefika. Mm -hmm. So everywhere you go, people know that Red Cross he gives Musada. Uh -huh. But this kind of uh, relief, maybe relief food, we normally depend on donors, local, international donors. Mm -hmm. But mostly, we now start to depend on local donors. Right. So people donate for Red Cross. Red Cross does not have money. We depend on donors. So the challenge that faced Red Cross is financial problems mm -hmm. where they depend now on donors right. and also the criticism from the public when you have a relief for programs people say you red cross you are so much biased mm -hmm. but maybe you have a little bit of uh, donation to give a specific population right. the key population but the public everyone needs to get the the, 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 the donation right. which uh, we may not able to to give it out so a lot of criticism say people, Red Cross, you are taking you are taking our money, you are doing this, but Red Cross does not have money. We depend on local and international donors. Mm -hmm. Even for you, you can able to donate Red Cross. Even one shilling can support somewhere. That's why you have teens all over. You have teens in the supermarkets. People at least to give one bob, to give five bob, to support the activity of Red Cross. Moving out to respond for, for disasters. It needs uh, some logistics. It needs uh, some... Uh, Something to, to respond. It needs fuel. Right. And this kind of uh, initiative, or this kind of money, mm -hmm. you, you get from the local donors Very and true. other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very true. So anyone can come and support Red Cross mm -hmm. in terms of donation. Mm -hmm. Apart from finance, you have activities, needs people, needs volunteers. This is as a society, not belongs to anyone, but a society for everyone. You, so you can come and just join Red Cross and give your support, not only finance, even your expertise experience the resources you can able to give to the society to support right. the society to run mm -hmm. now in our days we have a commercial entity like the ambulance those are the, our uh, commercial that gives us at least uh, some cash to run our activities mm -hmm. we have uh, trainings like first aid training we go outside there look for clients 
So when they pay, that's the kind of support they give the Red Cross, mm -hmm. which enable us to run our activities, day-to-day -day activities. We have um, what you call the Boma Inn Hotel. Mm -hmm. Those are our commercial entities that right. support the, our activities, mm -hmm. that generate income for the society. So the society does not have money. It depends on the donors mm -hmm. and our activities that you normally do. Very true. Yeah. Right. Um, but uh, now, where do you see yourself, you as Red Cross, in the next few years? Uh, Red Cross, we see, are going so much far. Right. Because uh, it, just like... Um, uh, 2015, you were 50 years. You celebrate 50 years of service. Mm -hmm. And the achievement that you have made so far, and right now we have the, the, the hotels, we have the ambulance, we have the training institute started in 2010, dealing with the short medical courses. Right. We have the, the disaster department. We have the... And so many things mm -hmm. that we have. So we are focusing to expand this society and to grow further and do a lot of innovations and invention of things. Mm -hmm. You have a department in Kenya that calls uh, Innovation uh, Unit. They run day to day, at least to develop new, new ideas, right. new things to support the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So you're looking forward to expounding more and more. Yeah, yeah. Right. We have um, entities that are out there, but they are so reluctant in giving back to the society. They are so reluctant in making sure that they do something for the community. Mm -hmm. What can you advise on? You see, Shadak, uh, as I said, okay. if you don't give, if you don't support the community, how will you receive? And if you want to receive, you need to give. Mm -hmm. You need to support. So I don't say that other community or other entities are not giving, but maybe uh, their approach and their uh, maybe say uh, in terms of innovation, mm -hmm. maybe they are so much uh, behind. But Red Cross, we don't sleep. We don't sleep. Mm -hmm. Every time we run, innovate new ideas. We are moving out to look for donors. Mm -hmm. As for like uh, someone that needs to eat every day, will you sleep and say that the food will come from nowhere? Not really. We need to move out. Mm -hmm. We need to go out to look for food. So Red Cross, we are moving out. We are moving around. So for those entities, I don't say that they are not moving out, but uh, for Red Cross, I know focus for, for Red Cross right. because you are a society mm -hmm. uh, being uh, controlled by seven principles. One of them is humanity. Right. What you call Hinvu. Humanity. Neutrality. Independency. Voluntary service. Impartiality and so on. Right. So when in the line of humanity, we put humanity first. We put humanity first, not money first. Or not our activity first. Humanity First. First. Right. And to run those humanitarian uh, activities, you need to go to look for donors to support your community. When you love your community, when you do good, uh, good things for your community, even God will bless the work of your hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very true. Right. And there are so many young people who are supposed to be joining you guys in doing mm -hmm. whatever you do voluntarily. Mm -hmm. But they are so as well as reluctant and they look at it and say, why would I even go and volunteer? I better go and find some other things to do to get some little bit of cash. Mm -hmm. Is there an importance of volunteering with the Red Cross? Let's, let's talk about Red Cross in the first place. Uh, as I say that uh, Red Cross is a material voluntary service. 70% people in Red Cross, they are volunteers. And say everyone in Red Cross, they are volunteers. People misunderstand that voluntary service is only uh, money. Mm -hmm. It's only money. But no. Even your time. When you volunteer your time, you are a volunteer in Red Cross. When you give your resources, you are volunteers in Red Cross. There's people donating their resources. Land, household items, mm -hmm. time, and, every, and expertise. So everyone, uh, uh, including the, uh, the, 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 the youths, for you to register as a volunteer Red Cross, you have 500 shillings to register as a volunteer annually. And you can participate to our activities. That's the benefit of uh, Red Cross. Right. And you get a lot of exposure and experience because you can go to where you can. 
because you are going to give uh, humanitarian relief services. Mm -hmm. You can even, uh, for me to come here because of Red Cross, without Red Cross, Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So you get exposure, experience, based on what you have uh, studied in your courses or in your school. Because we also have for the uh, interns, attaches in Red Cross, getting experience. Right. Good, getting ex exposed in Red Cross. Mm -hmm. So when somebody says that uh, Red, I cannot go to work with Red Cross, I think that kind of a person needs to visit our office and advise them or her. Because Red Cross does not need money only. You can have part-time voluntary or full-time. Once you, you have a part-time voluntary, like you, if you have activities, you can call you and you participate to our activities. Mm -hmm. Or you can come there and do your voluntary work at Red Cross. Red Cross, you have a lot of activities to do and to volunteer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very true. Right. Now, somebody maybe is listening out there and is asking, when is your next uh, first aid training? He's so much interested and wants to join and to understand more about first aid. Mm -hmm. When is the training? Okay, allow me to talk about uh, a little bit on trainings. Mm -hmm. We have first aid trainings. We have basic first aid trainings. We have occupational first aid trainings. But we normally charge because that's our income generating activities. Mm -hmm. Like basic training, we charge at 3,000 right. shillings per day and we'll get a certificate. Mm -hmm. And occupational first aid goes with uh, 6,000 for four days and you get a certificate and you will satisfy. Right. Like for uh, every month you have trainings. In the first place, is, is there an exam? <laughs> People fear a lot of exams. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in every for you to pass, you need to do there, at there, least there must be an exam. exam. Right. But it's not so much hard. Whatever Suppose if I fail the exam, will I get my certificate? If you fail exam? Mm -hmm. There's a time also to revisit uh, okay. and to, to check mm -hmm. your uh, pain, your performance, and mm -hmm. also you can you do it again. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm continuing to explain about the trainings. We have occupational first aid, we have fire, basic fire. Right. We have occupational fire, and then we have short medical courses. Red Cross is only society that have given authorization from American Association to mm -hmm. offer uh, short medical courses that we are running right now in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Short medical courses, if you have a basic life support for individuals and health workers. Because now it's a requirement for anyone, and especially the health workers, to undergo into a basic life support. To use a, um, the, on how to intubate a patient, on how to, to defib a patient, and how to use a monitor, on how to, to, to do CPR, mm -hmm. and how to transport a patient. Right. You have advanced cardiac life support. Mm -hmm in Kenya Red Cross. You have advanced trauma support, uh, life support for the nurses. You have emergency medical technicians. You have emergency vehicle operation, operators. So those are the courses that are running now. Like for the, these three courses that you are now talking about, the BLS, the ACLS, and EVOC. For individual, the course will start on October. Right. But for their company, this they year. have, yeah, mm -hmm. for Mombasa, because our uh, main campus in Nairobi, now we are starting Mombasa. Targeting all health facility, targeting individual to do BLS, SLS at affordable price. BLS mm -hmm. goes with seven thousand, right? And SLS goes with uh, fifteen thousand, mm -hmm. and if emergency vehicle operator course goes with thirty thousand, certified by American Association, and you are uh, accredited by NITA, TVET, and DOSH. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you deal with the training in Kenya Red Cross, they are very important. I need everyone to come and join and train these courses because they are very important in the community. Everyone needs to be trained first aid to save life. Mm -hmm. I'm so much, um, so much uh, sometimes uh, I ask people when I, go, I take my training to uh, maybe a company. Right. I ask them, who has undergone first aid training in your company? Who has said, no one. Mm -hmm. Which is a requirement to any institution to be trained first aid and fire. Even here? Even here. Mm -hmm. I hope next time we are coming to train you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you have also infant first aid. Mm -hmm. We have so many trainings where that we deal in Kenya Red Cross. Well, so, you are uh, welcome anyone that is able to, to get that training, to mm -hmm. be trained. Right. We have training first aid this month, next month. Every month we do train people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Very true. Right. So, I do believe out there if you 
um, interested in matters of uh, making sure that you get to know more about first aid and you want to do those uh, the trainings that he has mentioned, then you can share your comments with us, you can share your details with us, and we will relay them to um, Mr. Uh, Bernard here, who is from uh, a Red Cross Training Institute in uh, Mombasa, sp sp specifically on the line at which he centers himself in uh, making sure that he assists in uh, issues about training on uh, first aid basics and other uh, trainings that they undertake, the medical uh, trainings that they undertake. 